This is the Creeps Cast. So in regards to the whole the whole corona and like beer in general, like beer is an acquired taste. Oh, you wanna, you wanna I, start um, off that question? Oh yeah, absolutely, because frankly, Andy, first you throw us Great. the coffee question. Hey, I think- and that the coffee only question was a good question. No, it wasn't. Coffee it was question. Coffee well, this sucks. is balancing it out because I don't drink beer. I think Andy is doing us a favor and asking us questions, which not a lot of people do. So I'm not <laughs> going to give him too much. I'm not going to give him too much crap for answer asking us questions that don't always apply to us. I'm, I'm not going to complain. I'm going to have to tell Andy that his taste <laughs> in beverages are just the worst things ever. So, wow. Corona. Wow. Let's let's just roll it back to the actual question at hand. Corona with or without lime and does the fake lime juice do it for you or does it have to be an actual lime? Um it doesn't it should not be corona. That's the issue here. Corona is your parents drink. Everybody's parents loves coronas with lime. Actual limes, you have to buy a lime and you have to actually like cut it into little sections. And put it in your Corona. Yep. Otherwise, you you're not really drinking Corona. And okay. if you're not doing so that, then that's just lime. bizarre. Oh, yeah. You have to do an actual okay. lime. But mm-hmm. the issue is you just don't drink Corona voluntarily. It's like a, like a, oh, what's left in the fridge from the party you had the other weekend. Oh, there's like a case of Corona left over. I guess I'll have some. Thanks, you know, whoever it was for leaving this in my fridge. That's very kind of you. I guess I'll suck it up and have Corona. But... I think we were talking before this, like neither of us, like I used to be a big beer guy. It's, it's an acquired taste. You don't really like, you gotta like really appreciate beer, the nuances of beer. And I'm not like a nuance beer drinker. So I've transitioned to like the, the low calorie white claw seltzer beverages of the world Uh, because they're, they're just basic bitch. They don't make you feel gross. They don't add like 20 pounds if you drink like 18 to yourself every night not that i do but there have been times when you go a little ham at a party okay but like i'm just saying so big fan of the wc we're not going to name drop them until they sponsor us but anyways yeah, folks. Have, yeah. oh yeah i am more of a i don't so i don't drink beer again i don't drink beer at all but that's also I, but that'll never change for me specifically because I don't like drinking anything that's like carbonated. So like, I don't drink pop either. Like I, I just don't, I just don't enjoy it's that, all, that, that. It's all, um, that sensation. No, mm-mm. especially like that, after when you burp, it's like, and it feels it's like what is it? Nose. Cold brew. It's only cold brew for you. Cold brew based yeah. beverages. Well, I, I, okay. Hey, I, okay. Listen, <laughs> I drink a lot of coffee, but I also drink like a lot of, ju- I drink like juice. I drink vodka when I'm, when I want to have alcohol, like a vodka okay. is my go-to. Vodka, um, I'm vodka, a, cold vodka, brew. Vodka, but gr- oh, that sounds oh, hard. That sounds awful. So gross. I'm, oh, there are there are there are good coffee alcohol drinks. Out there, there are yes. like uh, like what is it like the the ba- uh, the Bailey's is what it's called. Bailey's the, is very uh, good. Um, there's a uh, oh god, it's another like here I can't remember. But like there's there's, there's, there's a, one where it's literally just like Starbucks vodka, which I've had before. It's all right for okay. like a Starbucks brand uh, like liquor, but you know, interesting. Um, yes. I am very much a, yeah, I'm very much a, a vodka, vodka lemonade guy, uh, just cause I'm, I, I, I enjoy the fruitier beverages speaking generally speaking. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. It is. I was pot calling the kettle black a little bit. There. Not, not um, to put my parents, put my, um, but, my spouse on blast, but her, she's the most basic. Cause what she does is she takes ice cold water, a uh, couple ice cubes, vodka, and then, you know, those like those flavor squirter things that you put in beverages like yeah. Mio or whatever. So she does like two oh. squirts of that. It's pretty good. Oh like, my God. It's, it's not uh, hangovers but, cause it's so much water, but like it is about as basic as it wa- gets. Yeah. Don't want, you can't water down your vodka. Like the, what's the point? What's the point well, of that then? Yeah. It's, it's all right. It's like drinking just like drink adult. It, a, I, I guess I, I I guess I just I don't I don't get the I don't get the point of watering it down in that case just do a non-alcoholic version or something just do a normal yeah, for, yeah. well I don't know like you can add it you can you can give like you can just add something like sour in there that like kind of imitates the vodka right like well you, like the the theory? little flavor squirters are kind of sour because it's like you know grapefruit or like I don't know, pomegranate or whatever it is. But the idea is like you get so much water intake with the booze that you don't get a headache. And speaking mm, of headaches, okay. 
<laughs> we get to go into the Canucks second day of the off season, which included the big announcement that Travis green had been re-signed to a multi-year contract extension. Good I like news. that they call it a multi-year contract in- extension instead of just a two year contract extension. Like multi-year makes it sound like way more mm. than it really is, but it's just two years. So if I, it's if like I being extra better. fancy. I would say that was done on purpose. Like, yeah, who knew? I right? would say they purposely did that to yes. make it sound that that. See, that's good PR. Uh, the yes. press conference we got today was not great PR. It was the but... opposite of P, like good PR. Well, I mean, okay, we can get into this a bit because I don't like. I mean, it's really sad to say, but in seven years, seven and a half years of Jim Benning being the general manager of this hockey franchise. This was probably his best press conference where he sounded kind of coherent and answered questions honest, honestly, truthfully, and kind of sounded like he had an idea of what he was going to do with the club down the road. Unfortunately, and accepted responsibility, and accepted responsibility at yes, points, which was that's not a big something one. he's done before. Unfortunately... Yeah. All of the answers that he gave, which were very honest and truthful and kind of painted a good picture for what he wanted to do, was basically more of the same that this team has done for the last seven years. We're going to go. We're going to go after big vets. We need more depth scoring. We need speed in the lineup. Just more of the same, which was very disappointing to hear. But we'll start off with the Travis Green extension because. I, I thought this was very funny. I think it was like yesterday or whatever. I messaged you and I was like, they're going to announce the Travis Green extension, but it's going to bury the lead. Some kind of bad news is going to come out of it. And we thought like maybe they're going to announce like a contract termination, like possibly Jake for Tannen or like, I don't know, maybe Jay Beagle goes on long-term injured reserve. Maybe someone requests a trade. Ian Clark officially walks from the team. That didn't happen yet, but the press conference itself was kind of like the lead getting buried because it was like, Oh, we extended the coach. Now we're going to answer all of the questions for why the last season sucked so bad. And all the answers were very underwhelming. I will say easiest press conference of Travis Green's career, like, or at least of his, at least of his season, right? Because this season has been like, it's been so trying for him. Like, you could, you could see it having to answer basically the same questions over Zoom over and over and over again this year has been... Yeah. It's taken a lot of... You can tell it's taken a, a, a bit of a toll on him. Absolutely. Um, and finally today, like, yes, there were a few questions directed at Travis. Like, there were obviously... Especially, like, at the beginning, right when they... Because, again, how many questions can you really theoretically ask about a contract yeah. extension for the coach, right? Um, but so for most part, he got to just kind of sit there and take in the answers from Jim Benning across the across the the table from him. Yeah. Um, and which is good to see him get a little bit of a day off before he goes into the off season, and obviously good to see that he uh, gets his contract. It took way too long. It should oh, not yeah. have come down to literally the second day of the off season, but thankfully. They got it done. We heard it might have been ha- might have ha- been done yesterday uh, during locker room uh, exit interviews day, um, but now it's official and that's huge. Like that's a huge yeah. load off the the team's uh, back that they don't have to worry about losing their coach. Not only to say like Seattle or the Rangers mm-hmm. or whoever else might have called, but the idea of having to go through the process of finding a new head coach after the last one did a really good job at taking a team, an underwhelming hockey team and yes. making them more competitive than they should have been. Right. It's a, it's also take like a big weight off of like, obviously Jim's shoulders because like he had been intimating the entire season too, like, Oh, I want to get Travis done. We want to get a deal done. And in his press conference, he even said like, you know, we floated a deal at the start of the season. And then it's basically just been negotiating the entire time, whether that's, I think he said at 1.2 before the season was over that like, oh, there's a there's a deal on the table, but like kind of intimated that ownership hadn't signed off on it yet. Right. And so it's probably like a huge relief. It's like, okay, I don't have to worry about getting one. The like the main thing, the coach is signed. I can just focus on building the team. Unfortunately, as I've already said, 
the plan appears to be the exact same thing that it has been over the last seven years that has produced one playoff series. And like, what is it? The, the play in round win and the win against the St. Louis win and, and, St. Louis and getting almost to game a, seven against and Vegas. almost yeah. a defeat against Vegas. Like they were almost there. They, I mean, it was a Pyrrhic victory I mean, that, because they, they beat them that's, eventually in the next round when they had their spirits broken and couldn't beat Dallas of all teams. Yeah. That ser- but that series would have been over in five if not for Thatcher Demko. Like that's yes. literally the whole reason Absolutely. they got a couple extra games out of it. So yeah, and and to to the credit of the players too, like even though they were getting completely shelled, like they bought into the idea that they just had to basically grind out the games, try and get like a goal here and there, and then just block shots like at will for their goalie. And they did. Like I think that one game when they won four nothing or something like that they had like 46 blocked shots or something like insane like that i can't remember what it was but it was like just an outrageous shot i think Dr- or, uh, i think drance tweeted he's like the series against vegas um that jim benning and co are striving to get back to was a series oh, yeah. that saw them outshot by a hundred plus yeah that's like, true Ooh. that's totally i don't know, I don't know if that's yeah, the that- model that you want yeah it, it it is and it was so funny i think because it was i believe it was daniel wagner who asked the question who asked the follow-up question later of hey you 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 want to get back to you keep saying make the playoffs how come you don't mention the stanley cup in that uh yes. in the when you say that which is literally some people got so mad again some people just got so mad at that like 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 that's implied it's like no it isn't that's no. very clearly not implied yeah. based on his answer which was yeah. well you know anything can happen once you get into the playoffs. that should not that's be not an your answer design that should that's not, not be that's not a plan that is Okay, we're gonna go into the playoffs and hope we luck into a Stanley Cup. Yeah. Because every because everyone knows that happens. That totally happens. Teams luck into sixteen playoff wins against teams that are far yeah. better than they are. No, the answer is no. No, they don't. If you yeah. like, yeah, sometimes underdogs win, but that's because they're still better than you expect, or they yes. play up to their. Uh, to their potential after not yes. playing as well as they did. Look at the yeah. 2012 LA Kings. Like yeah. people are like always point to that one as some great example of oh made it in and you can do anything. That team had got Jeff Carter at the trade deadline. Like yeah. that team was not an eight seed in reality. Like they had a bunch more players who just were pl- finally started playing up to yeah. the level that they were expected. They had fired team- a coach midway through that year because they had done so poorly to start off with. That's not that's not an uh, a team lucking into a championship. That's a team that was built well finally finding their form at the right time. Yeah, that that team was like notoriously underachieving and the fact that they were an 8th seed was kind of like like a lot of the analytics crew at that time were like they're not really an eighth seed. Like they are a really good team with really good goaltending. And the first round matchup isn't going to be like some cakewalk for the Canucks. And sure enough, they had nothing on them. Uh, yep. And so, yeah, like to hear that the long term plan for the team is to get back to playoffs. He said that multiple times. It wasn't just like a. Um, like these are obviously like key key points that he wanted to hit like at several times during the the thing because I was watching the video of it uh he was looking down on obviously like a crib sheet of notes that he probably had like keywords that you want to throw out there and obviously get back to the playoffs was one of them and that's on me isn't was the other cuz he kept on trying to like say like oh, a lot of this is on me like basically and like trying to do the and being aggressive. aggressive came up a lot, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> which is definitely a word I, I associate which with is, Jim Benning all the time. Which is very the last aggressive word, person, <laughs> which is the last word any person wants to hear when, when or like this last person that the last word that a Canucks fan wants to hear about a team that is notoriously pretty bad at making fair trades and notoriously bad at identifying free agents and now you hear the GM saying the goal is just to get back to playoffs 
And, you know, maybe we'll luck our way down the road, but the goal at the end of the day is just to get there and we'll figure out the rest later. To hear him say that coupled with we're going to be very aggressive in the off season, I, I had just like a shiver run down my spine. Cause I was like, they are going to sign some veteran center to be their three C and it's going to be another six by six million dollar deal. I don't know how, but that's just what they're going to do. They're going to spend whatever cap space they have after signing Pedersen and Hughes. They're going to use or it before. on a veteran three C. Oh, oh my God. Could you imagine? But Oh yes, entire, I can. That's we, why I said it. The, I can absolutely entire, imagine that. Oh god. The entire press Nick conference Dowd, was just like yeah, four, yeah, bring four bring years, six million dollars, Nick Dowd. But but that's the whole oh, thing. It's like boy. it looked like it was just running back the same. It's just wheel spinning, right? It's just well, all of these things that haven't worked, and I'm taking ownership for the reasons why our team wasn't that good this year. By the way. This year, we're going to do more of the same. We need more veterans. We need more depth. We need more speed. And it's like, like you have $15 million, maybe, to do all of this while making your team better. And most of your money is tied up to Pedersen and Hughes. Like You do not have money to aggressively change your team unless you're throwing away whatever prospects you have in your system along with all of your picks. Like you've already tried to deal away all of these awful contracts. And now you're saying you're going to be aggressive. Like, like these two ideas don't match up. You can't be like, we're going to, you know, we're going to learn from this and we're going to, we're going to get speed. We're going to get fast. And our, you know, our veterans, you know, they weren't scoring. Our bottom six wasn't scoring. So what we're going to do is we're going to get more veterans in our bottom six to score. And we're going to sign more. Sorry, we're going to sign more veterans in our bottom six to score. And it's like, like you don't have a plan. Clearly, you're just saying things that you think are going to help your club when it's like that. Those aren't going to help. You need defense. No. We've talked about this need- like a hundred times on our show. Like the defense needs so much work. So, so, and so much work. Come- and nothing's, and nothing's coming, coming from the AHL nothing's on defense up. either. If you're going to get someone on defense, it's either going to be by – it's well, the only way you're going to get them is by um, uh, signing, UFA signing or uh, trade. Uh, yeah. Or draft, is, draft isn't draft is an option because you're already yeah. – cons- you're trying to win for this year. So no, there's no defenseman out there that's going to come and help you right now, uh, yeah, at least the, not for, to my knowledge uh, in the draft like, this year. You would have to luck out and – pull like a Shane Goss to spare type trade or not trade, but sign like signing in the draft where you have like a late round pick who shows up at camp and proves he can be like an NHL player from the get go. Right. Like some guy, I don't think, I think Goss spare came after like a couple of years so that this might be the wrong analogy, but like the idea well, I, is, I can't even remember the last NHL defenseman who came into the NHL year one, like right after they signed. I don't. I don't think it's happened in a while. No. Like Quinn Hughes probably could have done it if he really wanted to. Quinn Hughes I think maybe could have done it. He well, yeah. I guess he t- did. He, he technically he did because he came at the end of the year. He technically did, but he came right. He came at the end of the season, played a few games at the end. Yeah. Um So I guess probably hit him. I think he was the only one, and then or I guess Rasmus Dahlin would have been the other one. That would have been the first one right there. Would be Rasmus. Right, Dahlin. right. But he was still a first overall pick, so you had yeah, to. Yeah, that's the pedigree he, still, he had. Right, you're not, and yeah, it's a it's far more the the outlier than the norm in terms of defensemen you pick up in the draft that come and help you now. Um, yeah. yeah, they need to improve in a lot of different ways. I did like. The one part I liked about the press conference at all in terms of what they plan on doing is when they mentioned they wanted a three a three, three scoring lines because literally that's never been a thing for them at all and they've never mentioned it once. They've been very clearly a team that wanted two for sco- two two scoring lines and two checking lines which does not make the team good. Yeah. I would like to see them I, it's an updated, it's an old system that no longer yeah. makes sense in today's NHL. I did like that they said they wanted to have three scoring units because that, that to me, implies that they're willing to go in and look for a top nine rather than a top six, which is what they're very much been stuck in for a while. But 
again, you're not really going to get that by uh, through free agency. And if you do, it's because you paid way too much for yeah. guys who are not going to fit that fit that mold. So you got to try and um, you got to try and find somebody like you got to make if you're going to be aggressive, it's about can you get rid of bad contracts and make room for better players to come in? Yeah, I I like that they said like we're gonna try and get we want three scoring lines. A part of me is like, okay, well, how the fuck are you gonna do that? Like, right. you put goals and coming in and like if you That'll can't give me six. You can't depend or on seven, him to guess, just be a top nine forward. Like, you really can't. Like, they obviously didn't de- they didn't count on Hoglander coming in and being a top six forward or a top line matchup forward, but he impressed at camp and just blew everybody away with his ability to actually be that so they can't Mm -hmm. they can't like reasonably go into next season thinking oh pod colson gonna be a top six guy top nine forward it's like set in stone like like i I don't know if they've ever checked like actual like development stuff but like some prospects just just come to the nhl for their first year and, and they have a hard time like the canucks have been so lucky with the number of young kids that come in and are like world beaters in their first season, because Hoglander by all accounts should not have lit the world up the way he did. Every single like critic or not critic, but uh, scout evaluator said, you know, he's doing well in the SHL, but the odds of him coming in and producing at the NHL level at like, a rate even similar to his SHL season is fooling themselves. Like he'll, he might be fine, but keeping up with the NHL might be really hard and he proved them all wrong. So mm-hmm. maybe they have it in their heads that they're just like, Oh, Pod Colson looked really good in KHL playoffs. And like, he does all these like North American things really well, that it's going to translate really well, which is fair. He might do it, but to count on it as like your your ace in the hole yeah like you like you cannot go into next season pet like putting his name in your top nine in pen because there's the odd chance that it might be a stumbling period where he can't do it it's Mm -hmm. i mean i've seen tape of him and i think he he probably won't but from like a from an organizational standpoint and like a a structure standpoint from an organ yeah yeah. you can't can't just like guarantee it. it You can't just like yeah. hand wave it away like, oh, this is a sure thing. We'll get the, the right wing in the center set up, but Pod Colson's definitely going to be there too. Because it's like, you don't know, right? right? Um, again, again, and I'm bringing like, okay, we've brought him up a lot of times this year, but again, it's relevant again because uh, it was mentioned today during the, the press conference. Um, but man, you know how good that, you know, how good it would look for the Canucks right now. If you, let's say you have, you already have, let's say Pedersen when he's healthy, you've got Besser, mm-hmm. you have Horvat, you have, um, you have JT Miller as of right now. You also have, uh, Tanner Pearson and Nils Hoaglander and, uh, and Nils Hoaglander. So that's six. That's your yeah. six right now. Right. Uh, you get put goals in that seven. So right now, w- the way the team is built He's getting stuck on kind of a checking line. He's getting stuck yeah. on a line where he can't uh, be as much of a scoring contributor. Hey, you know what would be great is if they also still had Tyler Toffoli on number oh <laughs> for number eight. Because then, hey, all of a sudden you literally have you could three say move to, you could say move three score. You would have three scoring lines. You'd have to find uh, a center. Um, you'd have to find yeah. a, a more a more upgraded center. Uh, yeah. Then uh, what would be right now? I guess technically speaking, um, mm-hmm. Jay Beagle because we don't know, or oh. maybe not even him. Oh. We don't know, oh. not even him may, possibly because we don't know where he's going. Sutter's in UFA, so he's gone. Yeah. Um, it would have, I guess, if they had kept him. Adam Gaudet would have been that. Would have been that <laughs> that center, which would have nope. looked okay. Sold on him. Would have looked had okay. It's too late, but too late now. Um, but hey, man, like you could have had Pearson down playing on the third or something. You maybe move, you have like Toffoli, you play, you put Toffoli with, Pe- with put Colson. That's a good looking. Yeah. That's the thing is like, like you could, the idea is like Tanner Pearson, like when the Tanner Pearson signing was announced, right? Like the idea is like, you, you can't expect him to be a top six forward for the next three years. 
in theory, the team will get better and he will get pushed down the lineup and you might have like provided his scoring touch sticks for all three seasons. You have a credible third line winger who can play matchup minutes and still produce. Right. But yeah, as it stands, that's, and that's they're basically, nothing. yeah, as, as it stands, they're basically saying what we have right now is our set top six and we need to round it out with a better third line and hope our top or our fourth line gets faster and starts chipping in for a change, which Again, it that's, didn't yeah. at all. <laughs> yeah, that's li- literally the biggest problem right now is the fact that they only have seven forwards who can really like if they again, if, assuming that Pud Colson comes in is able to contribute relatively yeah. well early on, that still right. means you have seven. And that means you have one winger, one pro- one likely right winger playing a l- playing on a line that's not as capable of putting the puck in the net and playing offensively. Because again, does anyone want Pud Colson starting his first season with Brandon Sutter, a guy who's notoriously is as far as the advanced stats go, like an anal- uh, or, a black hole in the offensive zone? In the offensive zone, I mean, I'd be even still more comfortable with Beagle than with Beagle oh, than no. um, than Sutter in terms no. of scoring, but that's still not good. I mean, I'm not saying I want that. I'm saying I would. It's I lesser think of Beagle two would be a better. Yeah, he, I would say Beagle is the lesser of two evils in the scoring zone, but you still don't want. But you still don't want that for Pudgolzin or even Pearson if he ends up say if you end up say putting sending him to as putting him as forward number seven, you move Nils or Vasily uh, to their off wing and you have a, hor- uh, a line with Horvat, Putkals, and, and Hoaglander, right? That's right. kind of what you have to start thinking about now if you're the Canucks. You have to start thinking, okay, if we're ch- chances are Putkals is going to start game one on the third line, the way that every forward, I believe, uh, the Canucks have brought into, like every one of their elites guys has started their first game on that third line. They've yeah. always kind of put them down there as like the safe bet. Like remember, Patterson. <laughs> Except first for game, Matthew Heimler. Louis Erickson. Louis Erickson was his first line mate, if I do remember correctly. Uh, Patterson's first line mate was Louis Erickson. He was the guy streaking down the wing. Him he, and, Go- and he Goldobin, was uh, I believe. yeah, him Goldobin and Erickson was the line, and uh, yeah, which and, like in hindsight is which like is, completely wild. Yeah, completely wild. But at the t- but it made sense that you know you don't know what the winger is. You don't want to put them in the hardest minutes on the hardest matchups possible. So you're going to put them on a line that's maybe not going to get as much attention. Put calls in right. Going to get stuck on a third forwards that just can't produce at that level and won't be able to help him be better in his own zone in the in the right. in the offensive zone and will be far too much more focused on keeping the puck out of their own net. So you have to find somebody to play there. You have to find somebody yeah. whether that's through trade or what have you to come into that lineup but again with the cap space they have that's not going to be very no. easy if possible if at all possible so yeah. you have to you have i guess the problem is yes aggressiveness is going to be is a good thing in theory but the when jim benning has exercised that that aggressiveness it has often really really backfired yeah so, you have to find, you have to hope that there's someone in there, somebody new coming into the organization, be it a president. Like again, this press conference really affirmed for me it, the mm-hmm. absolute desperate need this team has for yeah. a president of hockey ops, um, yeah. particularly one that has a different point of view from Jim Benning, so that it can it'll force more collaboration and more and more um, a better a better. Um, table of ideas, or at the very least, like say, if the Sedins end up being advisors who come into a role, you have to hope that their ideas are given a little <laughs> bit more attention and a little bit more weight uh, in that front office than than Benning, so that there's somebody there to be the foil a little bit, and someone there who's not going to be a yes man and just agree to everything that the yeah. team says, because otherwise you will run into more bad contracts like they have in the last years. Yeah, that is the thing. Is like they. I mean, with the limited cap space that they do have, you're basically trusting them to somehow start to be efficient with their cap space to fill out 
a third line or a fourth line or whatever it is, right? And historically, they've been very bad at doing that. They've always paid the extra million. They've already they've always asked added the extra year. So expecting them now to sudden like without like an expanded head office to suddenly just like figure out how to penny pinch and maximize their dollar like is a big ask. And that's why the press conference obviously didn't exactly instill much faith in the fan base, or at least it didn't for me and countless others no. on Canucks Twitter, because it's the I mean, same thing you get every year. It's the exact yeah, same. It was like the same answers every year. I mean, the, the actual put, quote that could, he put out was um, we expected our young guys to take a step and some of them didn't. And that's literally like verbatim every single again, season. Okay. Again, yeah, like you could, I think it would be very possible, and maybe this is a project somebody with more time wants to put together, is literally, I'm sure you could find the video from every single one of these year-end press conferences that Jim Benning has had and find him basically saying the exact same thing in yeah. all of them. Like every single year, it, with maybe the exception being the first one. <laughs> His like the first, first year? The first, the when first year when they made the yeah. playoffs. When they made the yeah. playoffs, got had an 100-point team. And uh, they did, and then got bounced by Calgary because Willie Desjardins can't coach. Um, like that team should have gone farther, in my opinion. Yeah. My humble opinion. That's actually a hot take I've had. Is that if they had gotten that past they Calgary, they might have made it to the. No, my hot take is that well, yeah, my, they underachieved. It's that they, if they made it past Calgary, if they mm-hmm. made it past Calgary, yeah, they would have finished. They would have gone to. I think they would have made it to the Cup final that year. <laughs> Well, like literally, after... because I think they would have lucked out and gotten some teams that literally they had an easy time with that season. Like Chicago and they had actually done really well that year against both of those teams. I necessarily think they would have won, but I think they would have won the championship. But I think they would have like just like somehow managed to get past all of those teams. But that was that one team had to get through, and they didn't. So it doesn't matter. Like, getting way off topic, yeah, that's, and that's it, every single year. Get the same press conferences with Jim Benning just every single year. Something's got to change. It's got to get. Yeah, well, one thing that didn't change, and I guess we can move away from the press conference a bit because it's pretty much just spe- speaking of uh, wheel spinning, but uh, we'll be doing a bit of wheel spinning with the uh, basically what we're talking about with Jim. It's more of the same, and we don't want to do that. We want to keep it fresh. So we're going to get into – one of the highlights of today's press conference, the thing that preceded it, which was the letter to the fandom from owner Francesco Aquilini, which literally had a piece. I mean, it's not a direct, it's not directly from it, but it is like a really prominent quote from the dark Knight, which is <laughs> so funny. Um, but yeah, like just, so much to glean from this um he referred to the team's young core and lumped in 28 year old jt miller into that group which i mean as a 30 year old i feel like like i would never have considered myself young at 28 years old (laughs) you know what i mean like at 28 i was like i think some people at work would be like oh you're still a young kid i'd be like what are you talking about i'm like 100 years old like I, mean, I, I guess he was just often, trying to be kind to the core I, in general. Yeah. But I will it's say just very hockey, funny. I will say hockey has definitely ruined my sense of age and time because Fair. literally like right now I'm 20, like I'm 23, right? Like I'm do I'm going on 24 uh, next month. Um, right. I'm relatively like, I'm relatively young, but I'm already, already thinking multiple times. I'm like, Oh my God, if I'm not like, if I'm not in my full-time career by, like, the time I'm 27, I'll never get there, right? Like, that's literally a thought process of mine because that's what because that's what hockey has taught me is that, it, it, is that your peak is, like, 27, 28, and then it all hurts going downhill. Yeah. I'm like, I'm going to be so old by the time yeah. I'm, like, in my late thir- – my mid-30s, which is, again, in the real world, that's <laughs> not the case. That's not true. Um, lots of people don't find their careers or their like full-time callings until they're like in their forties or their, or even their fifties sometimes. Yeah, exactly. Right? So, but, but yeah, in Very terms of, ho- from a hockey sense for, yes, from a hockey sense, yes, 27, 28 is about where your points start peaking. It's about where you kind of, 
yeah. you're you're very much at the player you are, and it's not going to get any better with the very rare exception. Sometimes people come in and do a little bit and have it's, like an older season, like. But you don't get like it's not like in baseball where like Bartolo Colon will be like forty three and will right. still be just throwing darts down the yeah. down the middle. <laughs> but in hockey, like, it's that, like it's it's very clear. Like at twenty eight, you're either you're either reaching your prime as a player and you have like maybe another two years like of like your prime or you fall off considerably from then on yeah and And what was especially weird about that about that whole mentioning of jt miller is that nils hoaglander was right there like you could have mentioned nils hoaglander so why did he pick miller some Uh, people think it was due to a report uh earlier in the day that we won't get into because it's just a report right now sure uh like too much but like there was talk of um allegedly miller not we'll just we'll say he wasn't necessarily the best at keeping his mask on at times we'll put it there yeah the, the, for now we won't even touch um, the 10 foot pole <laughs> yeah just because not because we don't trust it like the it's sort the source or anything just no, because but... like like and uh just because it's new and it's and it's exactly. uh and it's, it's impossible right to verify no matter it's, what. None of us, neither of us have the connections to verify that information. So yes. it's better that we leave it to the pros for on yeah. that one. Um, but do you want me to read the the Francesco uh, letter for people who haven't read, seen it possibly? Do you want me to do that? I have it right here. No, we're going to tell them to pause okay. <laughs> this and read it themselves because we are not it is on, we do, audible. We do have it on the video. So you can, we do it on the video you so you can YouTube read it video, if you, you want. You can see it. But, uh, yeah, you can't see the, the the letter. Here's my theory, though. So I think he lumped in Miller into the core because realistically, the core they've built sucks. And if you don't include Miller, suddenly the core doesn't look that good. And you can't put Hoglander in the core because then we have youthful talent, which he says in the second section doesn't look as impressive when he says we have young talent on an, on the rise and it just lists one player. They didn't even list you a levy. They didn't list Gadjevich. They didn't list Lind. They had well, they, will yeah. Lockwood would make a debut. Like they had, I mean, options. you could just, oh, you could just omit that sentence entirely. Exactly. To be fair. But he like, didn't. Just... And he didn't list five got five kids that they drafted, you know, within the last, three years or four years, sorry. And they didn't list any of them, which either says to me, they've made up their minds on all five guys that came in where they're just like, Oh, there'll be depth, but they're not going to be anything big. Whereas Rathbone and Hoglander, those are players for us for sure. And so you have (laughs) two sentences back to back where it's like, they're carefully crafted because you can't take out one guy because then your core looks bad and then you can't move the other because then your prospect depth looks like shit. So you got to like why not put kind Pearson, of both. Pearson isn't Pearson younger uh, or no, they're about the same no, age. He's like, they're about, he's like 30, isn't about he? About the same age. He's yeah, he might be a or little older. Or maybe but, he's 28, I don't know. I can't tell. Either, like, and he also has time. a longer contract, but he has a longer contract yeah. than JT right now. And um, cheaper. And, and cheaper. Um but I yeah, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a tough one. And again, yeah, the the core that... Well, here's the thing. The core they've assembled is, like, you, you said it's not good. I would argue that that's not entirely true. I think their core compared to, like, some of the others... Like, literally, if if this were more like basketball, right? Where you could get a... Where it's like you, you have only a few guys, like, who really need to take your team over the top and it can make or break. Like, they'd be looking pretty good. Like, they'd be a very good team as far mm-hmm. as... If you just were talking about the core, if this was, like three-on-three all-star roles, right? They'd be looking okay. They'd be probably one of the better groups there are. It's just the fact that the supporting cast is such garbage. But on the but that being said, like, if you, if, let's say this letter, you took this letter verbatim and put it and sent it back in a time machine to, like, 2014, to, like, 2014, yeah. to the Oilers, to the Edmonton Oilers, you could very much be like, we have, we have one of the most promising young group of players in the league. Hall, Yakupov, Nugent Hopkins. Yeah. Uh, like you could you could do pretty much a very close similar list uh with those guys on it, with those guys on it that would sound just as sound just sound just as good. So also, 
if you yeah. sent it back four years, also you'd be like to Canucks fans, you'd be like, wait, that's it? We've yeah. added we've added three players to that list. Griffin Reinhardt. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. Gr- but Griffin Reinhardt. <laughs> anyways, if you're listening oh, to this, like man. if you get a chance, like you gotta read the statement because it's really funny. It's like also riddled with like really bad like grammar and uh, I, th- I don't think spelling errors, but like he's like, uh, please get vaccinated as soon you can, which is, I mean, that's just funny. That's really funny. Yeah. Because yeah. like, you can. I mean, that's that sound. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah please, yeah, va- okay. please get vaccinated as soon as you can. Look, we're journalists. We can't judge on punctuation. Let's be honest. We're all we're the we're, if you, we, we we think we're good at it, but we're always making if, errors. If the listeners saw like the notes that I left for this episode, they'd be like, "This guy oh, yeah. writes for his spare time hobby. Like, why would oh, anyone yeah. listen to this? Like, spell check so is bad. A, My spelling spell check is, is our is our awful. Is our I, hero. It's a, you know what's funny is like I can. Like people can ask me like how you spell words and I can do that really easily, but I cannot type words to save my life. I do not know why. I don't think that's I don't think that's unusual. I think that's I think a lot of people have a harder time say typing something out than writing it down. Like um one of my fa- actually one of my favorite things uh when I was doing when I was able to go to games uh, uh and I was doing the giant stuff last year is uh I would get to sit with Steve Ewan from the province and mm-hmm. he would go and after like um and during our like uh post game interviews he would go down like he'd go down with we'd all go down as a group i have my like small little hand notebook uh but he'd bring like his like a full like a basically a full notepad right right and he would take and he would like and as a player like he would have i believe he'd have like he'd still have like a, a mic and everything but i'd see him like writing in his notes as he goes and to me they look like squiggles i'm like what are you writing like i'm like i can't even tell but he would be able to read those notes fully like you and he knew exactly what he was writing down in those notes even though i don't think i could i could tell yeah, what they were yeah it's nonsense which is you, so right? impressive which that's is cool. so like it that's crazy cool like and that's uh-huh. kind of the and i'm sure he types i'm sure he's a fine typer i've never seen him um <laughs> typing or anything right but like again that is a thing that i think with most i think i would generally say most people are better at writing and can kind of tell even their worst uh, their worst handwriting, their own worst handwriting, like what it is yeah. rather, compared to like typing where it's just like, sometimes you can just mess up every single word because it is very much a different skill, right? Like it's a oh, totally sure. different skill than holding a pen. Um, I'm, a, I'm left-handed. So like my writing is so am I. a complete nightmare. Are you really? Oh yeah. You left-handed? Did you not know that? No, I yeah, I'm lefty. I'm a lefty dude. Okay. I'm going to say, well, when I'm going to California, so there's, there's the left-handed store. Uh, on the pier, I will bring you back something nice. Uh, I'll make sure I'll go there. Bring, would you like? Uh, I'll bring you a pen. I'll bring you a pen if you want it. Um, Hell yeah! Yeah, lefty lefty pens. Yes, we do have to get lefty pens because we smudge the writing when we we do. Cause, we do. Cause it's very right handed world. Yeah, we live in a in a we live in a right handed society. Um, but back to the back to just that that letter and everything to kind of yeah. wrap it up. It's just you know. I always take, look, I always take the letters that any owner, whether it's Francesco Aquilini, whether it's, um, you know, Jerry Jones from the Cowboys, whether it's like an owner we're relatively like, uh, you know, relatively think does a good job, like a relatively good job, like say like Tom Dundon with the Hurricanes or, Mm -hmm. you know, what have you. I I always take those with a grain of salt because, you know, they're always good because it's their business. They're always going to, they are very much about the PR spin. They're always going to be, they're always going to err on the side of, on, on the side of positivity to a strong degree. Right. Yeah. So I never, I never really expect Francesco. I would never expect a letter from Francesco Aquilini being like, Oh, the team sucked this year. (laughs) Even if they like, they could go in 82 and he wouldn't be like, listen, we were garbage. This was trash. Like he'd still be like, this was a trying year. They're very good about that. Like they're very good about finding those those little those those different ways of spinning it, right? Yeah. But again, you're the worry with the Canucks ownership right now is that they don't seem to see anything wrong with yeah. the way the team has been going and the fact that in 7 years that 
this franchise that they own and very much like their profit lines, their profit margin lines matter to yeah. them. So, or at least we, be, and we believe they do. Mm-hmm. Um, they've clearly taken a hit in the last seven years, but yet they don't seem to be interested in trying to fix it and trying to fix the reason that, Hey, a, yeah. most NHL franchises when well run do not take seven years to basically just get to a seven-player core and one, two defensemen drafted and relatively playing well in the NHL. I mean, technically, you could argue there's been more, like Troy Stetcher would be another one you could throw in there. Yeah, but, but, they, gave, but they got rid of they him. Gave so him like, then they gave him away for yeah. no reason. For nothing. For, literally, for nothing, literally nothing. For no reason. There was no reason to give up Troy Stetcher. Yeah. Um, who's now playing for Canada at the World Hockey Championships. Um, Who lost to Latvia. In their first Oops. game, which is <laughs> yeah, that's ooh. right. Thanks well, a lot, Troy. It, oh, oh, don't be mean to Troy. <laughs> don't be yeah. mean to your to the guy who's gonna be uh, mailing you a birthday present. Who's gonna be? I'm the nicest birthday. guy to Troy on Twitter. Okay, so you know we all love Troy. I, I can, we all love I can Troy from Richmond. Raz him a little bit here and there. I'm sure oh. it wasn't his fault. It was probably Fair one enough. of the like the Fair New enough. Jersey Devils players or something. Fair <laughs> enough. Um, but yeah, like I'm never gonna really take what they say too seriously it's not worth it it's not the time but again the problem underlying being that when they clearly when they look at this team they don't see issue they don't see any issues and that's in itself concerning that they're so willing to let the team be mediocre rather than you know the team that they had at the start of their their run with mike gillis which whether or not you agree with what his with uh, how he ran the team himself, whether or not you yeah. agree with that, the team won two President's Trophies. Like they the won team two was President's really Trophies. fucking good. They <laughs> went to Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Final. They had, they had the best goaltender in the entire world at the time. Yeah. They had two of the best players in the world in the Sedins. And yeah, you can bring in guys to be special advisors. It helps, like having different ideas and... I will never be against the idea of having too many special advisors if they come in from like different era, even if they come in from like different eras and they're former players, because I do agree in the idea that more people and more diverse ideas make for a better product and better, uh, and make for better decision making. But of course, again, a lot of that is former, is just former players who all, you know, lived relatively the same experience. And that's why, I mean, not to use the Oilers as an example again, but remember the Oilers, when they moved into their new building, they had all those 80s guy, 80s Oilers guys on yeah. doing the same thing. And the team fell to garbage very, very quickly. And then Ken Holland came in and kind of shut that down very yeah. quickly. And now they're much, they're better now. They're much yeah. better now. They, um, they've overhauled like a very bad cap situation. Whereas for the Canucks situation, it's like, okay, they're bringing in all these legacy players. They brought in Linden. Now they're bringing in the Sedins. But it's like there's no, there's no desire. Or there's, there's no, no like, Alexander public... Mandrake here. There's no Lawrence Gilman. No. There's no where are these where there are no where are these people like I mean like what uh, happened to Quattrelli the forward had... thinking people basically yeah like, well, the, well the aside from Ryan Ryan Beach obviously aside from Ryan Beach who is there and that's great sure. Um, but like where, like say, uh, David Quadrelli had a great article about why they should bring back the, uh, the old computer boys. Computer boys. Yeah. yeah. Like, great. That would be perfect. That would be a great right. addition to your, to your staff and would make for a better, more, a better, more collaborative effort. Like those are the things that they right. should be looking for. But this letter obviously as, shows that they, they might not think be everything's fine that anymore. Yeah. They think it's, yes, they think everything's they fine. They think it's business as usual. They think they can just turn it around, get to playoffs, make their playoff revenue. And that's. I mean, there's been countless Again. articles written about this where where team or people that used to work for teams have come out and said, like, you know, sometimes ownership groups are just like, you know what, this year we're going to scale it back a bit. We don't really care about winning. We, we just want to get to playoffs. We have no desire to make a real run. We need to try and just save money, try and make some money or whatever. Like, but that the playoffs aren't the goal. So that, that happens all the time. But you can't that have your, that. That shouldn't be a. That shouldn't be an issue here. Like yeah, this you is can't have that, that should seven be. years in a row where it's just no. like we just need to get there, right? Getting there is not the top of the mountain. The top of the mountain is the Stanley Cup, and frankly, that letter and most of the non-communicative communicative efforts of Aquilini indicate that he wants to win. It just seems like he just 
wants playoff doesn't, revenue. He doesn't care that yeah, there's like, only three guys in his head office. He doesn't care that player ops are down to 20% of their usual numbers, right? There's just no, there's for, no interest. For a guy who's famously like, who famously really dislikes the Maple Leafs. Like, Francesco, it's well known that yeah. Francesco Aquilini really does not like the Leafs. Yeah. And much like a lot of Vancouver. Um, and, you know, fair. <laughs> Definitely fair. But, and if he hates the Leafs so much, my biggest question is, like, why, like, you've seen how much people jump on the Leafs after literally not getting into the first round and then losing yeah. every single time. Is that what you want to become the Canucks to become? Like, yeah. do you want them to be the next Leafs that cannot get through the first round, that keep making the playoffs for a couple games, and then just immediately getting stomped out by a better team? I yeah. would, I would certainly hope not. Like, that's not that shouldn't be your design and your your hope. You should right. be building a team that can properly uh make it through not only the first round but can get to a championship or at least get to a conference final and prove that they're one of the best teams in the nhl that's how that's what it's going to take and um you know you just you you, that's just what it's gonna that's what it's gonna have to be this year they're just gonna have to find a way to not make a desperate move here and try and for something that's not there which is probably what's gonna happen so you gotta (laughs) you gotta you gotta plan for everything here yeah, well, uh, we're going to close out uh, our episode quickly with um, the whole so John Tavares thing. Oh, okay. Playoffs are going on. Um, some of the series are, I mean, most of them kind of seem like blowouts for the most part. Like Carolina's oh, really kind of putting the wheels one. to Nashville. Uh, I mean, Colorado's giving it to St. Louis. Um, Boston, though, 3-1 lead over Washington. I mean... After the goalie injury, like that's not really surprising. I am not. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm not surprised. Not for the goaltending reason, actually. Surprisingly enough, I have looked like Washington is very much a team. Uh, they're not on the. They're not. I wouldn't say they're on the downturn. I think they're a team that's very much been caught in the Stanley Cup. Not the hangover. The Stanley. The Stanley Cup. We um, committed too much money to like long term to players who helped us win a championship. Um, which is and, like it's which, basically look, the, the Capitals it's case is, situation, right? It's like they they gave all the money to these guys who had been soldiering for years, right? So they started to pay these guys because they won the cup. Well, or they were it's better. The cup. Well, at least in Washington's case, it's better because they won. They won the cup, not somebody yeah. else, and then took their player, and then yes. took their players. Um, so at least they can say like. It's again. It's hard. I'm. I'm sure it's hard for Capitals fans to complain about those because it's like, hey, we yeah. won our championship after going 50 years without one. We're not about to yeah, start. We're good. Complaining <laughs> about that championship, right? And yeah. those players who won it for us. But the problem is now that there are a lot of guys there who are not as good as they used to be playing in like your bottom six and in your depth roles that shouldn't really be there anymore. And you kind of need a little bit of fresher face. But because they're still constantly in win now mode they don't really ever get they don't they've never gotten around to retooling properly yeah and i think that's kind of cost them a little bit here i think boston on the other hand is a team because they've gotten so close on multiple times they've routinely done a very good job at kind of rotating out and bringing in fresh new faces for that for that group um and like i actually i think i picked boston to win that series if i remember correctly i think i picked I them in our in our brackets feel i feel like I we picked. both did actually yeah because boston is a much deeper team than their record suggests and i think yeah. they're a little and, bit... and i think you and i are both on the tuka rask is way more trustworthy in net than whoever it is in washington than any boston yeah yeah we yeah, yeah right like now look especially up who the goalie yeah. was and that's usually yeah. a pretty bad sign for when you don't Van- know yeah Van- 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 <laughs> yeah i Hey, I knew the Cavs goalies. I think I didn't. I didn't know Nedeljkovic was starting for the Hurricanes, who yeah, got no, shut yeah, out right. in oh, Game okay. Two. And uh, and then uh, UC Saros has been much better. Uh, has been literally the only thing holding the Predators in for the most part of the series. Although right now it is four four in OT. They're in OT right now. Uh, that game and uh, the second period is just starting for Edmonton, Winnipeg. What series is oh, yeah. um, uh, as far as the series that have gone more than a game? So like excluding obviously Winnipeg one game. One and yeah. Toronto and Montreal won game one over Toronto. 
Um, like, what series has surprised you the most, would you say? Uh, I'd say the... Damn, I mean, I guess Vegas, Minnesota, because Minnesota is, like, really hanging in there, and, you know, they won the first game, lost the next two, but it's like a, it's like a series. It isn't just like, oh, Vegas is going to choke out Minnesota to a four four win game or a series they actually are making it competitive which is good mm. because i think you and i were kind of both on the same page like this series might be like one of the boring ones on the west side um yeah, it'll be, be like the, it'll be like the tampa or not tampa sorry the uh the pittsburgh islander sees series on the east coast which i mean i've been watching those games and pittsburgh's like actually really fun to watch when they're winning yeah. which which yeah. helps right i think be- when the islanders get behind the eight ball they actually they play, play a more different. exciting game. Yeah, they play different, oh, yeah. so that helps. But like, if they if, you, if they get the lead, it's it's <laughs> just dreadful. It's dreadful. Yeah. yeah. So that's and yeah, that series has actually been a little better than I I think a lot of us anticipated as well. I put that. I think that one would say it would be surprising to a certain extent. Yeah. Um, I am I'm not surprised that Tampa's beating Florida. I am surprised at just how great every single game has been. That's been like I. I wondered at the beginning of the series if we're overselling it, if it wasn't going to be as good or as intense as it's, it's we up. maybe thought. But, oh, it has <laughs> lived up and then some to the billing. Like, it's been it, great. That it, third it, game man. was incredible. Fan- yeah. Florida coming back from, I think, three goals down to yeah. win an OT. Um, Ryan Longberg, baby. Ryan like, Longberg, who apparently I covered when he was playing for the Stockton Heat uh, oh, yeah. when I was on the Barracuda beat. Um, but totally didn't remember, which tells you all you need to know about Ryan Lomberg. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think that one would, I think I would throw maybe that one into just a surprising, but I will say, I think I expected the Boston, uh, I expected the Boston, uh, Washington series to be a little bit closer, I think, than right. it has been thus far. Yeah. Um, well... Yeah, now you want to talk about you want to talk about the Tavares thing. You want to talk yeah, about I just that. wanted to quickly touch on this before we close out, because... Obviously, everyone saw the John Tavares knee to the face that uh, he unfortunately took from Corey Perry, purely accidental. Yeah, and then Corey Perry's on the bad side of a lot of ish things of like yeah. sketchy things. That was not one of them. That was very much a complete. Just did not like he tried to jump out of the way. You can see him very clearly yeah. try and like jump up and not hit him. Uh, yeah, and he at is first flying I was worried. too. Yeah, like, yeah, that is that is a hard, a hard move at Corey Perry's age to just suddenly dive out of the way of a player collapsing in front of him. Like that is a yeah, hard. He was in full stride. Move, yeah. And I was I was worried that his skate caught him. That the skate caught him because yeah. I saw the the back replay first. Because mm-hmm. I, I was actually in the car when it happened. I on the the ride home. Um, I, I, I saw, I only got to see like the clip of it and it very much looked like it, his skate caught him. And so yeah. you're a little bit like, in a way you're kind of like relief that it's like, okay, it was just the knee, but then it's like, then you go to this, like, the oh, situation Jesus. of, oh God, it was the knee like mm-hmm. that. Like, yeah, it was a complete accident. Makes perfect set. It was not. Yeah. And then you get the whole, the whole Nick Foligno this, thing. This is where, yeah, I wanted to just touch base on this. Cause I think you and I are in agreement. I think most people people in hockey are in the greens. Like there was no sense to Nick Foligno and uh, Corey Perry getting into a, like a code based scrap that would somehow, I don't know, I guess maybe if like, I think they were saying this on the radio this morning, like if it was to reset the mindset of the players to like get them refocused at the game at hand, like sure. But like you could see it in the fight that Corey Perry was just like, uh, I'll just take my beating, just whatever, go to the box. Yeah, like, I don't want to do this. Said something. Yeah, you literally yeah. said something like a post game. He's like, I, and I think um, Shea Weber tried to go in and be like, it yeah, was yeah, an accident. Why? Like, like, what you do you don't want? Have to. Are you, are you like, it's an accident. Why are you kidding me? Yeah. And, and then you hear like Felino after like, look, our captain's on the floor, blah, blah, blah. It's like, okay, look, accident. I get that Again. he's hurt. <laughs> It's an accident, and yeah. uh, it's it's really cool how the uh, how the response to oh my god somebody got seriously hurt is let's let's even let's I intentionally think we, that hurt means each other. I get to even it up by intentionally hit trying to injure you like that's bull like that's such baloney 
especially because they literally they knew it was an accident like the the leafs knew that it wasn't it wasn't on purpose and yet it's like we need to stick up for ourselves it's like stick up for what <laughs> yeah what, <laughs> what are you defending? do you need to stick up for like yeah you think somebody's gonna go gonna co- go out and try that again on somebody else yeah. like are you out of your mind are you out no. of your colossal freaking mind and then yeah. you see like and then you see some like galaxy brain takes like on Twitter where some people are like, trying to say, well, it, it, if you look at it a little closer, it does kind of look like maybe there was something intentional there. It's like, okay. Oh yeah. Shut we, up. You're completely we can get nuts. Into that take, the Jeff Villette, uh, 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 amazing uh, take that this was, this was, Jeff, this buddy, was clearly I like an accident. Why are you doing, why are you doing this? Jeff, why, know, Jeff. why? Jeff, okay. uh, well, Jeff, uh, Jeff okay, re- so treated my article. So, uh, okay, good for him he's, for he's that. Okay. But when Alex Edler, uh, exhausted due to COVID, needs Zach Hyman accidentally because he's a hundred years old and was exhausted from COVID, he RT'd my article or my tweet to be like, "This is such a bad take," and then got Leafs Nation up my ass, and a bunch of idiot Leafs fans. Okay. Where are they now? They're crying. Yeah, about, like, that's the, the oh, that's the funny like, part. So that's the funny. That is, is just irony. oh my god! Wow! Oh my goodness! Yeah. So like, you know what? Geez. Jeff Fillette, like buddy, <laughs> to see your tweet where you're like, uh, like this is a uh, clearly an accident, but little shady, like yeah, you absolute mm. simp for the fucking Leafs. Like get okay, over come, yourself, yeah, dude. Come anyway, come on, yeah, come on. That's got, like that's. I, I, didn't I saw lots of people with but... that. Yeah, I saw lots I of people. Awful. Lots I think he deleted it too because he that. was like, oh, this is actually like a really embarrassing thing to say. Which, yeah. I mean, good, you realize that, but yeah, I, I don't want to make this segment people, too much about he him. He was far from the <laughs> only one who who had some sort of take in that, in that range of like the, that complete error where Sherratt acts or Sherratt and they and Tavares collide and Perry very clearly tries to jump out of the way and accidentally gets clips Tavares on his way trying to avoid contact uh yeah. somehow that was clearly premeditated yeah clearly he had <laughs> yes. a feeling very very premeditated like you see the look they give them <laughs> very my my first thought was when i saw some of those was like and if you look and if you look in slide three you see a tuft of blue hair coming from the grassy knoll <laughs> like, yeah yeah like the oh, the yeah. whole marge the whole marge simpson trial uh yeah. oh and then like they try and tie it into like the kennedy thing <laughs> yeah, yeah. oh my god it, that's literally what i was thinking of when i saw some of those takes it was very very yeah. bad Obviously, we feel really bad for Tavares because, again, like nobody could like, have seen that. Like it's an awful that. knee. Like it's like, awful. Like it's awful like, that I, he got hurt. Like I think I've, it sucks. I think I've said this on this podcast before, but like I used to write about mixed martial arts. That's where I, like I first started writing actually because I was like interested in like basically the same kind of thing here, just like the the weirdness and the funniness about like a sport. And I have seen some violent knee based knockouts in my life but i have never seen a knee from a skater flying at like 30 miles an hour drill a guy as he's falling square in the temple and knock him out that was probably the most violent knee based knockout i've ever seen and this is coming from someone who watched uh george masvidal knock out ben Askren with a flying knee that like reverberated around social media for like months afterwards so these are it two was names i awful. definitely know and it yeah. was an accident yeah. and this one was an accident which is so weird yeah. yeah exactly and this was a complete accident obviously Tavares is probably out for the rest of the series mm, the game yeah. itself like afterwards Concussion. like i i don't know how they continued playing i almost feel like they should have like you feel bad for the players they should have taken like a 20 minute break or something and then returned like done like the intermission and then came back because i've always wondered about that like that is something that frankly we don't have the time to to dissect today is yeah what are what should the um what should the uh uh, protocol be in those situations where a player goes down like be it on purpose or by accident like because that violently like is there 
is like is it is it okay that we're making them play through it and because i I, because i don't actually know it could be very you could because you could get very differing answers from differing players on whether or not they want like some players will be like i just want to get the game over with and i want to be out of the arena as quick as possible so they wouldn't want to say put a halt on it because they just want it to be done and over with right Whereas yeah. some players will say, no, I want to, you know, uh, I want, I think we need to stop and reset sort of thing. Yeah. It really is a, it's an interesting conversation to have of whether yeah. going forward of whether or not that should be part of the equation and factored in. Yeah, because how many, I mean, in the past five years, how many games have we seen like at the AHL or the NHL level canceled uh, midway because like someone had like a cardiac episode like Jay Bomeister. Right, yeah. like, like that uh, one's, a, and that one is almost a different story because that one's like not something on ice related, right? Like that's just a complete like that's a very right. much a oh my god, this person might die. Please let's not do this, right? Right, and but it's any anyone who saw stopping it, for that, anyone who saw Tavares go down though, like, geez, people like yeah. were tweeting like, oh my god, is he dead? Because he he looked Which, in a don't do awful, that. awful don't way. Do that. Yeah, like, yeah, generally, I mean, like, if they look as hurt as they look, please don't, please don't ever tweet, is he dead? Don't do that. Yes. That's not good. Yes. Don't retweet uh, images or the video of him, like, failing to get up and be like, he's dead! Like, that doesn't add anything uh, or help. to a Yeah, and also to a certain un- newspaper that, or tabloid, oh. though unnamed, please do not post a picture of it with the title Captain Crunched on it. Uh, uh, underneath God. it that is garbage horrible uh you should be ashamed of yourself i saw some see that the worst take i saw was somebody going like well it's a tabloid it's supposed to be edgy it's like until the like the people got so easily it's soft and offended it's like no no it isn't yeah no it's not there is a big difference between just between making up sensical bs and just being an ass to like yeah to to like actually hurt people uh maybe don't do that okay like yeah like straight up yeah it's yeah, straight up like, hopefully the, Tavares is a hmm? hopefully yeah hopefully hopefully he's okay and when he you know, gets back to normal. He can sue both of those papers back east for using pictures of him completely unconscious mm-hmm. with like very callous and uncaring things written about him. I'm sure that was very awful for his wife or his family to wake up in the morning see. and see their yeah. unconscious son on a paper that's basically making a pun or a play on words about his health and safety. Truly yep. awful. To quote, trust the process. Those two papers are today's Wang of the Week. Um, <laughs> we but do anyways, not folks, we don't have the clip. We don't have the audio, but, oh well. the audio, but it, we can maybe borrow it sometime. But anyway, thank you guys for listening to this episode of the Crease Cast. We are going to cut it short because our last episode was like the mega of Omega episodes, an absolute unit, as I called it. Uh, so we wanted to keep this one short and just kind of short and sweet for your long weekend yeah. listening. Thank you guys for uh, listening to this one. Uh, there was still some good in that press conference. If you're really searching for it, go read all the articles from people that support our work, like uh, Daniel Wagner, Patrick Johnson, Harmon Dial. Like they've got some yeah. great pieces summarizing it. Uh, Rob Williams from the da- Daily Hive. I was all great everybody pieces. today. I yeah, was they, trying my best to retweet everybody. They are all really, really great things. Vancast episode about it was really funny too. Uh, but this isn't about them, but you can support them as well. But you can support us. <laughs> this isn't you about can them. It's about us. My, hey, you can support me at Cody Severson on Twitter or at CometsHarvest.com. Lachlan, where can they support you? You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Lock in the Crease. You can find my work at LockInTheCrease.com. I have a couple articles coming out in the next little bit. Um, and, um, yeah, if you haven't seen my article on Canucks.com, go check that out as well. Yeah. Um, and uh, if you have the money, if you have the money and the income to do so, consider supporting the show uh, yeah. with our Patreon at patreon.com slash creasecast. For five bucks a month, you get bonus episodes of our of our series Off the Post uh, that baby. we do over there. And we also, uh, you can also get some perks like sometimes exclusive uh, early looks at some of our, some of the stuff that we're working on or other things. During the summer, that might, uh, we might be able to add some stuff. Who knows? We might be uh, adding It might be like one episode 
of regular crease cast one off the post because there just might not be that much news. So it might be a little Maybe. fun, a little bit of hockey, who knows. But also, don't forget to leave us some reviews on YouTube, on your favorite podcast streaming services. Give us five stars, even if you think it's a one star. We appreciate the reviews. We love to read them. We love your comments. We love everything. Thanks so much for tuning into this episode, guys, and we'll catch you guys later. Bye. Bye.